So let's talk about precipitation rates. This is going to be a pretty important concept for everybody in the irrigation business, whether you're doing service and repair or installation or whatever. So you're going to be dealing with the precipitation rates. And so how we're going to deal with it on the front end is when we're looking at the sprinkler performance charts, and it's really the nozzle performance charts for a sprinkler. For instance, if you get a rotor, you're going to have, you know, maybe six to eight different nozzle selections, and you're going to need to look at the performance chart on that to see what the precipitation rate is. And what it is is just a calculation of the amount of water that you're putting down. It's always going to be in inches per hour, and really that refers to an acre inch of water, but I mean, it doesn't have to be a, an entire acre. I'm just saying that's that's what the initial calculation is on. So when you look at the performance chart, like we're seeing here, and you go go out across, I have an explanation of the square versus triangular spacing in another place. But they're going to have the the inch hour precipitation rate, and that's what we're going to design our irrigation systems with. Now we're always talking about the gross precipitation rate in these calculations. It's the measure of how much water is actually leaving the sprinkler heads. The net precipitation rate refers to the water that's actually making it to the ground and being soaked down into the root zone. It's a harder calculation to make. And there's actually two enemies to your net precipitation rate. One is wind and the other is evaporation. And we'll talk about this again in a, in a different place, but when it's time to you know, set up an irrigation system to run, that's why my, my recommendation is always going to be to run a system in the early morning hours before the sun comes up and try to get all of your watering done before the sun actually breaks the horizon. Because what happens in those pre-dawn hours is when the wind is almost always at its minimum. And that's also when the temperature of the entire day is going to be at the minimum so that you're mitigating wind wind and evaporation and trying to get the best net precipitation rate that you can get. Now you'll see in some literature some different calculations on the net PR and it's almost always a guess because it's you really can't tell and every situation is different and every property is different. Some places have you know wind that blows all of the time depending on your elevation. If you're up on the side of the hill you may have wind being an enemy a lot but it's also choosing the right sprinkler head and also sometimes the right irrigation valve that'll help you with these things because if you get too high pressure now obviously too low of a pressure is a problem as well you need enough pressure to pop the head up and to get the flow that we need out of the head but too high pressure is also a big problem you know as we see here it's a we see a sprinkler that's under incredibly high pressure and I, if I remember correctly about this particular property they were running at about 110 psi in the system so you need to use you know a valve or sprinkler heads that have pressure reduction or sometimes you have a flow reducer or a pressure reducer on the valve that can help you bring down that and when you're looking at sprinkler heads really what you want to see is big fat droplets that fire out of the head and then land on the target zone versus if it's at a high pressure that water is going to atomize as it's coming out of the sprinkler and then get blown away and depending on how hot it is if you're running a system in the middle of the day a lot of times if it's being atomized like this at a high pressure some of that water is just going to evaporate off into the air long before it reaches the ground so when it comes to achieving what the net precipitation rate, there's really only one correct way of doing that, and that's with a catch can audit. And that's a, a process of putting out these catch cans. They usually have a little spike on the bottom and you put them out like every 10 feet or at a prescribed distance all across a property. Then you run the irrigation system. Then you go and look at the amount of water caught in each of these catch cans and put it into a chart and then use a series of calculations to achieve the net precipitation rate. And if you're working like it generally if you're going to be taking this class you're probably really only going to be working with residential or light commercial properties which is kind of the entry level knowledge and competence of you know area 
you're probably not going to have a call for doing the catch can audits because they're time consuming and a lot of uh, customers, clients on this level are not going to pay for that. And almost always when you run an audit, it's going to prescribe higher run times for the irrigation system versus probably what you have it set up for just based on the sprinkler type and what you know about the property and the soil type. So and especially, you know, if you're working with residential and you start really increasing the run times on an irrigation system, you're probably going to get a lot of pushback, especially if you're having to pay for, you know, metered water. I understand that there's places in the country that only have curb stops and they're not metering individual usage. So that's kind of a different situation. But if you're paying for the water and you start pushing those run times up, you're probably going to get some pushback from the customers on that. But at the end of the day, we're still just trying to calculate everything out for the optimum plant health.